Hi, my name is Kate Crowley. I'm on the faculty in the Program of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Teachers College, Columbia University. I've created these video modules with my co-author, Georgia Duan. Welcome to Module 8 of Differential Diagnosis and Preschool Evaluations, a Case Study. In this module, we're going to discuss dynamic assessment using repetition of non-words, syllables, and sentences. We are starting to suspect that this child has developmental apraxia. Let's listen closely to his speech in this video. I'm just going to say some silly words and you have to say them back to me. You've never heard them before. Are you ready? Nabe. Kuch. Babu. Nikisa. Didado. Wait, 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 wait. Didado. Di da da do. Di da do. Di da da Chi chi cho. Chi 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 cho. Mimi, very nice. Ma bi da bi. Ma bi da bi. Ma da bo. Ma da bo. B t chu. B t chu. Cha cha cho. Cha 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 chu. Naib cho vabe. Na. Dibby dibby do. Dibby dibby do. <laughs> How about this last one? So chi bo. Bo. Say it again. So chi bo. Dibby bo. <laughs> How about this one? Babo. Babo. Nai bay. Nai bay. Choi vab. Choi vab. Cha chi. Wow, that's great. So two syllables with non-word. Excellent. One of the more interesting pieces in this evaluation for the differential diagnosis was in the non-word repetition task based on research by Dulligan and Campbell. At this point, he's starting to lose focus. It could be that Alex is tired. We've been working a long time. But we can see that he is really trying to repeat the prompts correctly. However, when he repeats di da do, he says it in different ways and even adds on another syllable sometimes. Now we are starting to see more of the typical productions in a child with developmental apraxia. Some one syllable and two syllable repetitions was, were okay. Once we got to three syllable repetitions, they began to break down. Generally, we wouldn't mind the breaking down with a two year, 10 month old, but what stands out is how they break down. The vowels are varied, the length of the syllables is varied, and the consonants are also varied. All of this starts to confirm our suspicions that Alex has developmental apraxia. Here is how we describe that. Notice that we write this in the evaluation section, which is an unusual place to put it. I've never put it in that section before, but we'll discuss why we did this in the next module. Sequencing and planning of sound symbols and words. Alex was able to repeat single and two syllable non-words such as kuch and babu. For example, when Alex was asked to repeat the three syllable non-word di da do, Alex repeated it differently each time after the same three syllable prompt was repeated. First di e di da, then di da da e di da, then di da da e do. This example shows the variability of vowels, number of syllables, and that his production did not improve with these three repetitions. In the speech assessment and intelligibility section, we need to include a paragraph to offset the erroneous finding of the prior evaluations that this is an articulation or phonological processes case. For example, we, we noted he he did substitute the S for the T, and we want to emphasize this is not a phonological process because it's developmentally appropriate for a two-year, 10-month-old to stop the S fricative so son would become ton. It is a developmentally mentally appropriate way of saying these sounds. His speech production continues to be consistent with developmental apraxia as we notice the variability of production. Speech assessment and intelligibility. Alex is able to produce all age-appropriate sounds and also sounds that are well above his age expectations, including m, b, p, n, t, d, k, g, s, z, sh, j, f, v. While his earliest speech language evaluations indicated that he had phonological processes, this is not the case for several reasons. 
First, most of the phonological processes identified in the evaluations are either developmentally appropriate, such as stopping the S and cluster reductions. Secondly, Alex's sound protection is extremely variable and it's continually changing. We did learn that Alex speaks less at school than he does at home. We want to cover, cover two other possible diagnoses, the silent period in second language acquisition and selective mutism. We know this is not the silent period because Alex is a simultaneous bilingual with a significant exposure to English since birth and English is and probably always has been his strongest language. Another diagnosis to rule out is selective mutism. We also decide that this is not a case of selective mutism. We learn throughout the evaluation that Alex is extremely aware of the fact that he often cannot be understood. He looks to his mom to help him when he isn't being understood. He limits his productions during the evaluations, which is consistent with the mom's report that he doesn't use his language in preschool. He communicates with his peers non-verbally, but he really does try to communicate with peers in school. He says hi and bye, words that he can say well. He also does not demonstrate any need to control the communication situation or great anxiety or great shyness, which are often characteristics of selective mutism. Rather, he is adjusting his output but he, because he knows he can't be understood. He wants to communicate in school, but he just isn't easily understood. We have now ruled out a number of diagnoses from the incorrect diagnosis of Alex's prior evaluations to silent period or selective mutism. By the way, for more information on selective mutism, the Hollis, Holly Harris article, Elective Mutism, a Tutorial, continues to be an excellent resource. After the evaluation, I was thinking more about the non-word repetition issues with developmental apraxia, so I asked the mother to send me a video of him saying these series of three syllables for more data. From this video, we learned that Alex does pretty well with syllable repetition, but in the last one, there's some distortion of vowels and consonants. These are sounds that we know he can make in isolation, g and b. As we start to think about the child's IEP goals, we want to include this consonant vowel variability and slow to increase speed to develop the ability to vary between syllables. Next, we will listen to Alex's repetition of the sentence, I can do it. Remember what your part is? I can do it. I can do it. Good. All right, ready? I'm a penguin and I can turn my head. Can you do it? What do you say? Well, I can do this. Yes. How about I'm a giraffe? And I can bend my neck. Can you do it? And what's your part? I? I can do it. Very nice. I'm a buffalo and I can lift my shoulders. Can you do it? I? I can do it. Very nice. I'm a monkey and I can wave my hands. Can you do it? What do you say? Well, I can do it. Very nice. I'm a seal and I can clap my hands. Can you do it? No, I can do it. Very nice. I'm a cat and I can arch my back. Can you do it? Meow. <laughs> what do you say? No, I can do it. Yes. I'm a crocodile and I can wiggle my hips. Can you do it? No, I can do it. I can do it. I'm a camel and I can bend my knees. Can you do it? Yeah, what do you say? Oh, no, I can do it. Yes. Oh, I'm a, watch out, Mommy. I'm a donkey. Watch out, Soliana, and I can kick my legs. Can you do it? What do you say? No, I can do it. Very nice. I'm an elephant, and I can stomp my foot. Can you do it? 
What do you say? No, I can do it. I'm I am I and I can wiggle my toe. Can you do it? And what do you say? No, I can do it. Very nice. And say it again. No, I can do it. Very nice. The I can do it responses that he gave were not originally supposed to be part of the evaluation as we brought him this book from head to toe by Eric Carl as a gift. The first time that we read through this book, we did not videotape it. <laughs> through this first read through, Alex could not say I can do it clearly. There was great variability in vowels, consonants, and syllable length throughout the first reading. Even he, when he was trying to repeat what I was saying, I can do it, he would say it in ways that I just really couldn't understand. Great variability. At times it's hard to tell if he was even saying I can do it. Here is how this appears in the written evaluation. A final example of this occurred when the evaluator read Alex the book from head to toe. In that book, there is a movement made and the child is asked, can you do it? To which the child responds, I can do it. During the first read through of the book, Alex hesitated greatly in saying, I can do it. His repetitions of the sen sentence were so variable that it was often difficult to realize that he was attempting to say, I can do it. Each time was different and greatly variable in length and number of syllables and the phonemes used. So then we reread it with him videotaped. The repeated sentence, I can do it, contained all the sounds he could say. None were difficult, no blends, just k, n, d, k, d, t. If we listen very carefully, there is variation in the initial vowel, the final syllable, and the k in can. This gives us stronger confidence in the developmental apraxia diagnosis that we have been putting together piece by piece in this evaluation. Here is how we describe the second reading with Alex. The second time the book was read, however, Alex waited for the evaluator to give him the prompt of I and to give him some intonation prompts and tap out the syllables on his arm. When the story was read a second time, Alex had all the words in place and only occasional minor, minor variability in the first phoneme and last syllable. This indicated that Alex has great potential for a multisensory approach and has high modifiability and is stimulable. This can happen in evaluations that the materials and elicitation tasks that we think are going to give us the best information actually just give us information. But what gives us the best information may come from something that we do instinctively to get more. What we have watched in these modules are just pieces of the evaluation that were videotaped. There is much more information gathered during the evaluation which was not included in this video tutorial because there are a lot of information that does not get used. Much of the information gathered in an evaluation is either redundant or does not provide any additional insight into the child's speech or language skills. We follow our clinical judgment and what the research tells us as to what activities and evaluation materials to use to gather lots of information that might be valuable in the differential diagnosis. Our job is to build a foundation of data and confirm and reconfirm our thoughts and instincts. We use our clinical judgment to hone the elicitation tasks to arrive at the appropriate diagnosis. Now we have gathered a lot of data about this child. In the next module, we'll discuss how we put it all together in the written evaluation report.